Good evening and welcome to the Art League's gallery opening for our June shows. My name is Ariane D'Souza. I'm the communications director at the Art League and I'm happy to welcome you to this month's show. This month in the member gallery we have our annual landscape exhibit as well as dimensions, a special exhibit showcasing sculptural work in all media. Uh, these serve as the perfect foil uh, for this month's solo show, Prismatic Motion by Keely Ray. As you can see, this show features figurative work that draws on both traditional and contemporary approaches to the human form. We're delighted to host Keeley, the youngest solo artist on our slate this year, uh, who earned her BFA in painting from Brigham Young University, Idaho, and who is presently on the faculty of the Art League, teaching both drawing and painting. Welcome, Keeley. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations on your show. <laughs> How did you come to pursue painting as a career? Um, that is a great question. If you asked me in <laughs> high school, um, things that I would be doing, there were a couple things I said I would never do, and one of them was going to art. <laughs> um, but I took an art class in college for fun, and a professor, he asked me, oh, so what is your emphasis? And I go, oh, well, I'm not even doing artist degree. And he goes, well, that's a waste of talent. And that kind of got me rethinking about it. And I was lucky enough to go to the school that I did and have a lot of support um, there. They had a very like traditional uh, curriculum, which I found has benefited me throughout my life. Uh, what was your inspiration for this show? Okay, so specifically this show, um, I had just graduated and I was in the middle of a pandemic and I was painting a lot. And everything I painted, it could have the craziest sort of like theme. I was just painting like dinosaurs having a tea party. Yes. Um, <laughs> but even those works, even as fun as they were and colorful as they were, they felt very, very stale and very like rigid. And I decided, I was like, okay, um, let's choose the most like movement thing I could possibly think of because I don't want these things to feel still or stale. And I had a friend at the time who was a cheer coach and he was always doing flips and aerials and stuff <laughs> like that. And I'm like, hey, can I come take some photos of you? And he's like, yeah, just come to my practice. Why don't you just come get a bunch of photos? And a lot of these references that you see around here are from that photo shoot. I couldn't help but notice that some of them are seem to be like doing flips while wearing socks, which sort of yes, surprised exactly. <laughs> me. Do, do people usually practice uh, cheer they were this gymnastics specific. in socks? Yeah, this specific time, <laughs> yes, they were. So, uh, okay, good. Um, and so were you working mostly from photo references or a bit? 100%. Okay. Yeah, 100%. I don't think there would be any way to capture some of these movements without um, doing it for photograph for sure. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, what um, informs your um, color choices from, from image to image? From image to image. Um, so th that's a hard question because it depends on every single image. It changes a little bit. Specifically for the show, I was trying to hit every like major color possible. Um, if you look at the little eight by 10 pieces specifically, you will find a red dominant, an orange dominant, a yellow dominant, a green dominant, so on and so forth. So I was really trying to hit every single part of the spectrum since prismatic, yes. for instance. <laughs> um, and as well as just kind of do it as a study of what color combinations worked and everything. Okay, thank you. And could you tell us a little bit about um, your time in Nicaragua? Yes, okay, so the giant paintings that everyone keeps asking about. Um, first and foremost, these are masks. I've gotten a couple questions. People have been asking like, oh, what's with their eyes? They seem very different <laughs> than the other ways you've been drawing eyes. Um, so I was in Nicaragua for a year and a half. I was living there, um, working as a missionary actually. And one of the things that I loved about it there was just how bright and colorful everything was. Their houses were pink and orange and green. And even more colorful than the houses were um, their festivals and just how they went all out. And I happened to have started this show when I had gone through some old photos. And I'd always wanted to paint these and never really like found where they would fit in. 
And I was looking at those. And I'm like, you know what? They're dancing. It's colorful. It's movement. Why can't I work with the rest of these? And so I chose to do them life size because I'm like, this needs to be a party, right? And so I really wanted people to be immersed in the color for it. And uh, do you feel like do you feel like you succeeded in in breaking out of your your static? situation with your oh, 100%. work. Oh, 100%. The only thing is I'm like, okay, yeah. now what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you working on now? Currently, um, I've been talking with a friend about this, actually. Specifically, I've been getting a lot more into portraiture. I, As you know, I teach here. I teach as a portrait drawing teacher. But in addition to that, um, I have been moving into as much movement as I got here. I want to do a little bit more complicated um, compositions a little bit more like this, but specifically I want to focus on time and bittersweet moments in our life. And so that's kind of something I've been moving into. So a little bit more melancholy than this, but a little bit fun. Okay. So you have, you have like the theme for your next solo show. Exactly. All, all worked out. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. Um, if you want to, you can um, add any comments or acknowledgements you'd like to now. Yeah, actually real quick, if anyone has a question, I will happily take it. Would anyone... Does anyone have any? Yes. How long did it take you to paint the star crazy? Okay, so the giant one, that's a common question. Um, the actual design and everything, it overall it was, I started it two years ago. You can ask my mom about that. Um, and I took a little bit of a break on it and then I actually came back to it, but in total it was quite a long time, for sure. So roughly two years, if you condense it, probably about a year. <laughs> What's your favorite piece and why? My favorite piece. Oh, that is a good question. And this might surprise some people, but it's the little green one right over there. Um, I just love the little composition and I think the frame just works perfectly with it. Do we have any more questions? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you. If I had to describe it, you would say it's beautifully crafted. The drawing is excellent. The color is excellent. The compositions are excellent. This is, this is everything that you want to see in beautifully crafted, lovingly made work, without a doubt. And they're fun to look at. There's energy and motion. It's just, yeah, it's great.